Hi everyone, my name is Jovena Franks and today we're going to talk about Attention Project 6 of CS50 AI. So pretty much in this exercise we're going to write an AI to predict a masked word in a text sequence. So as we can see in here I'm going to write a sentence and I'm going to let a kind of a tag here to tell all right I want some suggestions for a word to insert here at the end of the sentence and our program will generate some suggestions. The same can happen with a mask in the middle of a sentence and we can see here we have some suggestions like book, bottle, and plate. So we're gonna do pretty much what they mentioned in the lecture, which is really nice, but in a shortest version. Our goal is to implement three functions and then we're gonna analyze, we need to analyze the output of the diagrams, but it's something all right as well. If you have any questions about programming, if you feel that you need more practice, you can check the description below where we have our platform where you can practice easy exercises, intermediate and high level to understand the very basics of programming until this point here of CS50 AI. So without further ado, you should install the folder. Here we have this file mass.py, which is the one we're going to work. You should run this message here, pip3 install our requirements.txt to install those libraries we're going to use. And for those who are using Mac, you may find a problem when you're installing the libraries they, wa they want. So you should also install, oops, you should also install this library here doing pip3 install tf keras to have the appropriate environment for this exercise, all right? Only for people who use Mac. If you're using Windows, that's fine. Then they are using a model that we saw during the lecture. We have three predictions here. They are setting some global variables to use. Pretty much in the main function, we're gonna ask the user for an input. We're gonna convert this text into numbers. So here, if you don't remember the lecture, let me show you here with the debugger so we can see what is this part. Basically, we are gonna convert all the words into lowercase because we can compare it a little bit better. And then, besides that, we're gonna change the name of the words to a number. So it will be the ID of each word. So, for example, the word dog has number one, the, the word cat is number 100. So each word has a specific number to represent the word we are talking about. And this part of converting it into numbers, we're gonna use the libraries that they install. So this part we don't need to worry about, okay? Our first job is to implement this get mask, mask token index. So we should return the index of the token with the specified max token in the ID or none if not represented in the inputs. So what they are telling us here, when we do, when we type the input, the text, the sentence, our first goal is to understand where the mask is. So where, what, what is the position in our sentence that we want to find suggestions for a word? So here this variable mask has a particular number and we need to find in where it is in our sentence. I'm going to go ahead and use this sentence here because it's shorter and I'm going to paste here in text. So when we enter in the function get mask token index, we have the number of the text mask. So this word in here, uh, square bracket mask, is represented by the number 103. Then we are receiving a variable inputs. And if we click in here, we have several things inside, but pretty much we need to extract exactly the inputs we want to work. So those inputs are in here in this inputs IDs. And then we are able to get exactly all the numbers for our work. I know here the debugger is kind of complicated, but once I write in here, you will see. The first task we should do then, we're gonna get those token IDs so we can look in our program. So token IDs, it's equals to our inputs on position, inputs ID, as we can see in here. And then we should say position zero. And because this is using the TensorFlow library, we're gonna use the dot numpy to do this conversion of the token ID to actual numbers. All right, so when I run it again, let me run with this sentence one more time. We're gonna see what I am talking about. So I ran it again, just to let you know, I had a typo here, it's input IDs. And right now, if I expand this token IDs, we can see that we have here a list with all of the numbers of the correct words. So this number 101, one is actually not the word then. If we take a look in here and if we remember from the lecture, this is representing this square bracket CLS to represent that this is the beginning of the sentence, all right? Then the word then here will be number 2059. The word I here is the has number 1045. The word picked here, it's 3856, all right? So those are the numbers for each word. And right now our goal is to find the position in the sentence where we see the mask. 
So we know that our mask is the number 103. And if we take a look, it's in here, it's in the middle of the sentence. So this is what we're going to do right now. We need to tell what is the position of this word in the sentence. And we know here that it's position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Because in programming, we always start counting at 0. Here are two ways of doing this exercise. Actually, there are several ways. You can do a loop in this list and check when you have this, uh, when you find exactly this token. Or you can use a function index that will give you, that will retrieve to you exactly the position in the list. So I'm going to do a try and accept because I will try to find this item. If I cannot find, I'm going to return none because this is what they are telling us in case the user made a mistake and didn't type the word mask. So I'm going to return and we'll certainly convert this into a list. So token IDs. We cannot see what is written here. And then I'm going to use the function index that will give me exactly the index of our mask token ID. Otherwise, if we have a value error, I'm going to return, let me fix here, I'm going to return none. Okay, so we are going to run it to the next function and you will see we will know exactly the position we should check. All right, let's move forward because the next function is pretty straightforward as well. We are going to call the function get color for attention score and we are receiving the score for the, the attention score in here. Our goal is to convert the attention score into a shade of gray. So here they are telling us to use numbers in the range of 0 and 255 to represent the shade of gray. And I'm not sure how familiar you are with colors in RGB, red, green, and blue. If we want to convert something to gray, the three colors must be the same number. So if you have a color 250, 215, 250, this will be a gray color. So anywhere you have red, green, and blue with the same color, this will represent gray. So this is exactly what we should do in here. I'm going to remove this part. I am going to start double checking if I'm going to start actually converting this attention score into gray scale. So to do that, we're going to multiply by 255. So I'm going to say gray value equals to an integer. I want to certify that it is an integer, not a float. And I'm going to do attention score times 250. And then I'm going to return a tuple with those three colors, because again, as I told you, we need to represent the colors of red, green, and blue. So all of those three values, they should be the same. So I'm going to return gray value, gray value, and gray value. All right, so as I mentioned, pretty straightforward. Then we are going to do the next function. So I'm going to do the setup in here for a moment. All right, so before we see the next function, I just ran it again so we can see that here we should return the position six, if I'm not mistaken, that represents where the mask is. So when we get outside, we are returning exactly where we have the word mask. Then we're going to continue our code and here the part of, of making it grayscale, we're going to double check once the diagrams are ready. And finally, we need to implement this visualize attentions. We're going to receive the tokens, which is is the numbers of each word we have available in our sentence and the attentions which is used in here in our model. So here tokens actually is not the number, it's the word itself, all right? And so as I said here, this is the initial part of our word and here that we have the other words and here it's telling us that it's closing. We have our max mask here on position six as we notice and we are going to generate this diagram as we saw in the lecture or like we can see in here. Our goal is to turn one diagram for each attention. So pretty much the value attention is a tuple of tensors and a tensor can be thought of as a multi-dimensional array in this context. To index the attention here, we are going to use, we're going to see in a second, but pretty much our goal is to do a loop in the attentions that we have and then we're going to call the function generate diagram. So we need to send the layer number, head number, the tokens and the attention weights. The, here we can see an example of what's going on. I am sending here as layer number one, head number one, the tokens, which is this list. And also I am sending attention weights, which we can see here it's found by doing attentions on position zero, position zero and position zero. Actually, to be honest, here they are hard coding so we can see an example. But here they tell us how can we work with attention. So to index into the attentions value to get a specified attentions head values, you can do as you can do so as attention IJK where i is the index of the attention layer so this is good we need the index of the attention layer j is the index of the beam number which is always zero for our case so we're going to hard code zero and k is the index of the attention head in the layer so we have we can find here the head number okay so this is pretty much what we're going to do in order to solve that we're going to start doing our loop so I'm going to start doing a loop through the layers of our attention. So I'm going to say layer index and layer in enumerate 
hint to make it easy our program here so we can get the index and the object itself of attentions. Once we do the loop through the layer, we're going to loop through the heads of this layer. So I'm going to do a for head index and head in enumerate. And here we won't say layer. We should say layer on position zero because they told us that it will always be zero for our case. So layers on position zero. And to be honest, this part of layer and head is just about working the documentation of TensorFlow. All right, there's no big deal. I know it is hard and then probably that's why you're fine that you're watching this video, but they kind of overcomplicated something you could find in the internet in their documentation so here we are just making it right then once I do this loop I'm gonna call the function generate diagram where we know the first number is the layer number so I'm gonna say layer index the second parameter should be the head number so I'm gonna use head index then we should send the tokens which is the same variable and the attention weights which will be head dot num pi to generate this weights for our attention. Another thing that is important to check is that they are telling us that the layer number and the head number, they should start counting at one. Because in programming, we start counting at zero. Here, we should go ahead and say plus one. So we start counting at one and not zero, all right? And then here, we don't need to do any other thing. So I'm gonna run my program and at the end I run it, we will see the diagrams and complete this video. But then one interesting thing we can see is that by now we already have three suggestions for our mask. So we have book, bottom and plate, which is exactly what they want us to print out. We're gonna see the, the diagram and then we're done with this video. All right, so now we completed our program. And as you can see here, that generate diagram is generating those, all of those images in here for each layer and each head. And the most important part of this project now that you completed the exercise is to take a look at each image so for example here is the first diagram when your model so here you can see kind of how your model is working you know we didn't implement the model but we can see in here the gray the gray scale here it's nice so our function gray is working and then you should take a look at some special images for example layer 3 head 10 if you see here the pattern we can see that this is the moment where our model understands that the word that we are right now for example the word then is connected directly with the next word of the sentence with the word i the word i is connected directly with the word picked and so far and the other relationships will be the same so this is interesting to see that this point at layer 3 had 10 our model was able to understand the relationship of the words which word comes after and and before there are other layers that are pretty interesting they guide you through here in the background session so you can see here that is the same um, pattern as you can see you have others and if you want to understand a little bit more go ahead check each diagram it's pretty interesting and basically this is how we complete the exercise all right i ran check 50 i got all green you should do the same and if you have any questions share here on the comment thank you so much for this video if you need any support check the description below and i hope to see you in the next one bye bye